This section is going to be on bandpass filters. In a previous video, I talked to you about high pass filters. Now I'm going to talk to you about low pass filters because both the high pass and the low pass are fundamentals within the bandpass filter. So a simple low pass filter. Let me get a better marker for you. A simple low pass filter looks like this. This is an inductor based low pass filter. Now, we will primarily be using capacitor based low pass filters because they are easier to design around. So the low pass filter is a a fundamental building block along with the high pass filter within a band pass filter. So here you have your low pass. Now it's important to remember the time constant, tau, and with with any filter your omega C which is your angular frequency at the 3 dB. This is your 3 dB angular frequency, also known as your cutoff frequency, your angular cutoff frequency. And that's related to our, the frequency of our cutoff frequency. So by 2 pi times f of c. So f of c is our cutoff frequency. This is our angular frequency, our angular cutoff frequency. So as you can see here, f of c is equal to omega c divided by 2 pi. Okay? So whenever someone, for the most part when you're working with filters and you see in a book omega c, that's equal to 1 over RC. And RC is, let me get this light out of here. RC is your time constant, your tau. All right. The graph of this looks just like the that of the high pass filter, except it's a low pass filter, so it lets through all of the lower frequencies. This is our 3 dB frequency, and this is our H in decibels. It's also known as the attenuation of your circuit, which is V out over V in. The magnitude. So this is our cutoff frequency. And this is at That's really supplemental information. Now, it's important to note the phase of any circuit. So, since this circuit only has one capacitor, 
we only have one frequency dependent component so you're going to have phase angle of 90 that's the most that we can get so it starts at 0 since it's a low pass filter 9 is 45 degrees and 90 degrees now I'll show you the math to get this graph in a second so it's going to look like this and this right here is our center frequency at 45 degrees so we know the phase the phase angle of this circuit in order to find our center frequency is going to be 45 degrees All right. and that's equal to the arctan, the negative arctan of omega over omega c All right. now to find omega and omega c we need to find the transfer function h So looking at this, you can easily find the transfer function. What is it? I'll draw it in a more familiar way in order for you to see exactly what this is. So we have, well, you can just tell it it's a voltage divider. So no need to draw it out. V out equal to, so V out equal to C over, well, C, you need resistance. You need to work with the resistance of your capacitor. So, negative J over omega C over R plus, you can write this as 1 over J omega C over R plus 1 over J omega C. You see that? It's just a simple default voltage divider. Remembering that in uh, for the phasers, for capacitance, your, your impedance of your capacitor is equal to 1 over J omega C. So then you just take the resistance of the voltage, so the, the voltage across the resistance that you're looking for, or the resistance across the voltage that you're looking for. So 1 over J omega C, R plus 1 over J omega C. If this isn't familiar to you, look up how to do a voltage divider. So V out is equal to 1 over J omega C over R plus 1 over J omega C. It might look like magic, but this simplifies, and you can work through the arithmetic. It simplifies, and this is all multiplied by Vn, by the way. It simplifies to V out over Vn is equal to 1 over 1 plus J omega R C. Okay? And there's our transfer function. Now, omega so remember that R C is equal to tau, so V out over V in is equal to 1 over 1 plus J omega tau tau being RC, and remember what I told you earlier, 1 over RC is equal to omega C. So you can see here V out over VN is equal to 1 over 1 plus J omega over omega C. That's our transfer function. Right, and then the magnitude of that there you go. And as you can see from this, we can get our phase, the phase angle of our transfer function H is equal to the negative arctan omega over omega c. 
See that? So remember tau is tau like omega c is equal to 1 over tau. So tau is equal to 1 over omega c. So you can see that there. Okay? So looking at this, so this has to be go on like so to be more realistic. So you can see here that at low frequencies the output follows the input and they have very similar phases. But once you get to higher higher frequencies that doesn't happen with the low pass filter. See here. Now, getting to bandpass filters. So remember all of that. The bandpass filter looks a lot like the high pass and low pass filter. And we are going to use inductance. This is a fundamental bandpass filter that you will, without a doubt, see in your future electrical engineering career. And you should have it down like the back of your hand. So normally you'd have a load here. I'm going to work without the load for now. Maybe I'll put it back in another video if I get requests for it. So, with the bandpass filter, with any filter, I guess the first thing you want to do is find your transfer function. So, looking at this, we can, tell, we can find our transfer function by doing simple KVL, KCL. If it's not simple, go back and learn it. wasn't in the camera so it's just the, the resistance through each one of these components multiplied by the current I and then we relate the output with I so R I right. make sense resistance through there multiplied by the current through there is equal to V out. Should be out. And this gives us a transfer function equal to R over R plus J omega L minus one over omega C. So this is the attenuation. And some important equations. So it's really important to know the resonant frequency. This is like the number one. The resonant frequency of a bandpass filter or any filter that has an LC component one LC component is going to equal one over square root of LC. So we know that the center frequency is going to equal one over two pi square root of LC.
and looking at a graph with bandpass filter. So this would be an ideal bandpass filter, or a non-ideal because it has a curve at top. And then inf an ideal would go up to infinity, and these would never touch. Because you'd have an ideal, you'd have an ideal low pass, an ideal high pass, and then you'd have you have quality factors. So this is would be a quality factor of say 20. Let me draw this out. So this would be F not. F1 this is F2 so that's your bandwidth your bandwidth is located at 1 over the square root of 2 times your transfer function H this is in dBs this is frequency so this is a quality factor of 20 let me draw different quality factor graphs over here just so you get the picture better quality factor stricter narrower section that you're going to be filtering very poorly drawn sorry about this let me do this over So that would be about 20. That would be about 10. And this would be about 1. So in order to find the bandwidth of this guy, you do F naught divided by Q. And then in order to find so in order to find Q, for this circuit. Q for this circuit is equal to XL, the center frequency over R. In this case, it's 2 pi F naught L over R. And if you had your load, it would be 2 pi F naught L over R in parallel with RL. In order to find your first and second frequency, F naught minus your bandwidth divided by 2 easy enough and then the same thing for the other one except you add And that's everything you need to know about bandpass filter. If I didn't teach something to you that you want to know, let me know in the comments.